Today I'm joined again by Tyler, who is here to talk with me about Call of Duty World War II. Let's go right into it. Tyler, tell me, how do you feel about this new Call of Duty? It's all right. I know, put the pitchforks down. It's all right. <laughs> That's not good enough. <laughs> but so, so so you're the the reviews editor at thegamefanatics.com. You reviewed this game. You gave it a 7, right? 7 out of 10. It was not bad. That's good. Yes. It's okay. We can yes. calm down. So, well, give me your overall feelings about the game. Well, Here's here's my thing when it came to came to Call of Duty World War Two from the marketing from its inception to its announcements, everybody kept think kept saying and the major outlets kept spinning this as Call of Duty going in a bold new direction, saying how they were going to return to World War Two and go back there and use all the technology and you know design techniques they've learned over the years and do it justice and be this mm -hmm. grand return and everybody was thinking wow what a brave and what a brave risk they're doing and i was that one guy in the back that kept saying call of duty started as a world war ii game they had like four i'm serious, yeah, like had four. four yeah seriously the first three <laughs> games it made by infinity war was world war ii then treyarch made world at war which was another world war ii game and yeah if yeah that was the first major thing for me and two it didn't feel I wouldn't say fresh so much as it felt kind of desperate in light of the release of Battlefield 1, which uh, EA and DICE put out last year, which for me held more of a cash because, you know, not many games out there, you know, did World War 1. I. I think the only other one I could think of was Ubisoft Montpellier's Valiant Hearts The Great War. But yeah. World War II, World War I think I brought up, uh, brought up somewhat even my review's intro, like, World War II has kind of been done to death, and it's usually the exact same conflicts that we always seem to go to. We are we're always part. We're always following the bloody first. We're always going to be storming Normandy or Omaha Beach on D-Day, and if and if Stalingrad doesn't get doesn't get taken, it's written off as nothing. It's always the greatest hits album. And for me, people keep saying World War II is worn out. I'm like, haven't you done your research? There's plenty of other fronts you could take this to. Go to more. You know, do that multiple perspective thing and go for multiple fronts. So when I started the campaign of World War II, it's like, oh great, I can't. Oh great, I know exactly <laughs> what I'm getting because you're an American. You're part of an American platoon. You're part of the American intervention, aiding the Allies, trying to help them retake retake the retake France on the European front. I'm like, yep. First mission is D-Day. You're gonna keep fighting, Battle of the Bulge. I'm like, yeah, I've done all this before, and that, no matter what, that was no the problem what, with it, right? <laughs> Yeah, that for, that for me was the major problem. It said it said they were going to go back and do World War II justice. And the thing is, the, the, the Modern Warfare games, I know that seems kind of crazy to bring up, but that one actually brought up multiple perspectives as well, with the British SAS and the U.S. Marines and, you know, all these other perspectives. And they did it, and they did it well to kind of give this sense of a world-spanning conflict. World War II, I noticed they were trying to do a more intimate storyline with it, but the entire time... I kept thinking I could be watching Band of Brothers right it now. It was okay. The, this this storyline is so ham fisted in like it's so just a narrative of convenience for these cool things they made. It's so yeah. annoying, and I I didn't realize it till later, and it was so obvious. He's writing letters right back to his his uh, wife or whatever, and yeah. every single story mission starts with "It's been three weeks. It's been six weeks. This is the next day of that battle," and I'm like. Every single mission starts like that, and if you wanted a boots on the ground, make it a just solid story of these people going through the war instead of these disjointed set pieces that are so like you're a Russian spy for a mission, or not Russian French, spy, French, French spy, yeah, for a mission. And it's like this is a completely different game. It's not and bad. I love that. That I was like one of the best missions. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a prolonged stealth operation, and I like that. But it's so yeah, but, art like out of place with everything else. Yeah, especially since the especially since the stealth in this game is kind of terrible. Yeah, it and especially talking about Battlefield One or bringing that up had good stealth mechanics that yeah. played into the gameplay. Yeah, this doesn't. It, it, it is really weird to kind of bring the to see how they're trying to do stuff, but it's very poorly implemented and that's something else as well like 
there were a few moments where I felt like if it, it felt like they made the set pieces first and then just mm-hmm. slapped the World War II skin over it. Like I think I brought up once again the, the train. Yeah, the train annoyed the crap oh out of me. Oh my god. I w- okay, so I was streaming this game. So I have my live reaction of like, oh, this is cool train explosion. Okay, it's still exploding. This is cool. And, and then it so- kept going for like two minutes. I'm like, how long is this train? <laughs> that Seriously. guy should have been dead seven times over. <laughs> and everything, he always falls on his back and like looks up at things that are about to fall on him so many times. <laughs> Oh my god! The, the number of times, to- the number of times I, c- I could recount his vision going blurry and somebody yelling at him and him having to crawl away and something—it's—it's—it's it's, it's strange. It's bizarre. It, it feels very practiced. It doesn't feel genuine, and that's what no. annoys the heck the heck out of me. Like it wants to be—it wants to be an emotionally emotional experience, and it's trying its damnedest despite how familiar and by the numbers it is, but it just didn't register with me, like. Probably uh, you mentioned how ham fisted was. I thought it was relatively on the nose, but inoffensive for a moment until it gets to a sequence where they very blatantly kind of imitate a certain bombing sequence in a forest that feels ripped straight out of Band of Brothers, and mm-hmm. he gets and he gets visited by the specter of his older brother because he's a Texas farm boy and he shows up with a hat. And I'm like, oh, for heaven's sake! <laughs> <laughs> it's all it all feels like a missed opportunity. The majority of the game is like, oh, this is so close to being ah, uh, nah, like yeah. oh, no, you didn't get there. Yeah, you tried but, though. But, but, yeah, uh, yeah. The closest thing to uh, to like major action set pieces I thought were impressive, like legitimately great, was the Battle of the Bulge, but. Battle of the Bulge, because that one felt like it actually had time to breathe and there was a proper setup with it. And we're talking just individual missions. That mm-hmm. was fine. You know, that was proper build up. You got to see soldiers in the downtime. You got to hear a bit of radio, which I thought, well, you know, the game does a good job of establishing a baseline of normalcy before they, th- they throw you to the deep end. So that's fine. And there's that dogfight sequence you have whenever you're, whenever you're going in trying to give air support to the boys. And I thought, that's good. But then you get to D Day in the Normandy, and you're out of Normandy Beach in like two minutes tops. Yeah, that I mean that should have been the whole level. Yeah, th- 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 the whole thing should have just been taking that beach. It almost know? should have been in slow motion with like phasing, like the, you mentioned this in your review, like the beginning of uh, Battlefield One. It the, should the have been Harlem, like that. He- the Harlem Hellfighters, yeah. Yes. yeah. The Harlem Hellfighters pro- prologue was very nasty because they because they. You know, the, the mission opens with you saying, you're not expected to survive, you're in the thick of it, you're going to die, and then they made those deaths meaningful by showing a name and the date and having a blur by the soldier who died, showing mm-hmm. just how brutal and harsh and nasty this conflict was. And Call of Duty World War II's blurb is just, you know, biggest war ever in, in American history, we're here to fight the Nazis, we're here, and now we're on D-Day, and... It, it, it then it turns into a discount saving private ryan it just you, yeah you mentioned the nazis which i feel like this game goes out of its way to like not mention they're nazis most of the time or not even show that they're nazis in a way that i found weird i did notice the military uniforms were were very much german military uniforms like, like i didn't like i didn't see a full on ss uniforms like maybe the end of the game mhm so on the one hand, on the one hand, I'm gl- I'm kind of glad for that because you know I, I think it's because video games is a little too used to showing Nazis as a shorthand for you know irredeemable piece of human garbage <laughs> that's that's okay yeah. to kill, and for a lot of people you know they always think of you know the armband, the uniform, blah blah blah. But with the military uniform of World War II, I thought okay, that actually makes a bit of sense, and and as you said, they really didn't get into a whole lot about what happened until like the fi- the very last epilogue of the campaign and. That was probably mm-hmm. the closest thing to legitimately tasteful and respectful and impactful I felt the campaign got because of how they treated a, a certain supporting character when you uh, discovered him. Yeah, I agree. They did a. I was I was expecting them to fail <laughs> with that ending sequence, and they did a pretty good job overall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that really is Call of Duty World War II's campaign to me in a nutshell. Like it has one or two moments of legitimate sincerity and passion behind it but everything else feels infuriatingly by the numbers if you played any if you played any call of duty game in the past six seven years you know exactly what you're getting at with with this campaign you got your pistol you got your shotgun you got your quick time events you got your now hold on these quick time events weren't in the last game and they are terrible here well that's the problem because for me 
uh, the last major Call of Duty game I played was Advanced Warfare, which was also made by Sledgehammer. And did and it have that quick one time also, events? The, oh no, it had quick time events, and mm. they were pretty bad. We're, we're, we're talking bun prompts the size of your pinky, and you have maybe two seconds to um uh, to, to to do them, and they never <sighs> and every now and then they wouldn't respond. Like, it would be responsive, so I'd be so I'd be stuck in these quote unquote action sequences where I would just keep getting ragdolled. Yeah, and... I don't understand. These these quick time events would feel bad in like 2010. Yeah. They're 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 laughably bad. Like the first one you get into the game, it, it's like the reticle's not even on it. I never knew what button was going to pop up. It's like what is even happening? Why? Just show the cutscene. It, it's it's like they were trying to utilize the quick time events stuff they saw in Shadow of Mordor. Because they saw how useful that was, but at the same time, like they they don't commit to it. Like quick time events, for me, you need to make it clear what kind of quick time events being used yeah. and how it's going to be used, and and keep the button prompts consistent if you're going to use them. But this just back and forth, back back and forth between mash X repeatedly to not die, or move reticle into circle and hit randomly generated button to not die. That was the worst or, part. Like, is that a circle? I don't know. This is really tiny. <laughs> well, the thing is. You know that didn't bother me so much because Shadow of Mordor. You know, I, I I saw that and thought, oh, it's like Shadow of Mordor. But the problem was, it's a different button prompt each time, and yeah. they're, they're a bit more forgiving this time around. Like, like they weren't as obnoxious as, as Advanced Warfare, but it still made me feel like I was basically playing a, a remaster of of like Call of Duty Three or something, or yeah, or World of War. It just didn't <laughs> ironically feel... a feature that feels as old as World War Two. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's what kind of annoyed me a bit about the campaign uh, overall it was just these little tiny things like okay they clearly want to go back to basics but then there's some then there's certain things when you go back to basics that you it's the problem with, with being very with trying to go with, with a reductionist approach you need to add something new to that and this just fell by the numbers like yeah. you know like I swear to God, I think it was like four or five sniping sequences, and I just I went through those in a daze. Just some of those were really good, but you're right; it was just like another. All right, I guess we're doing this again. And I think that's probably more or less due to um, I think mine, not to mention the community's kind of burnout with Call of Duty's annual release schedule, and yeah. it doesn't exactly it doesn't exactly help though, because once again, World War II, you know, going back to basics, and the campaign wants to be something fantastic and gameplay wise it feels like this should have been like eh, it just bothers me but i will say i do think it did a smart call when it came to the multiplayer at least a few smart calls okay so talk about that because i did nothing on the multiplayer <laughs> didn't even do i didn't even do a match i loaded it up and i made i picked a faction and i exited the game so you, so, you basically, so you basically just shotgun to the campaign, and then I'm like, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I rented it from Redbox, and I was like, I'm, I'm done with this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I played a couple of rounds of the multiplayer, you know, to get a feel for it. You know, try it yeah. out war mode, try it out. You know, it's all the, all the, all the other modes, the usual ones, team deathmatch, capture the flag, kill confirmed, you know, uh, grid iron. You know, you know, I'm like, okay, that's fine. You know, you know, this is the regular, you know, menagerie of Call of Duty modes, but going back once again, the last major Call of Duty I played for review and just played period was Advanced Warfare, and the multiplayer in Advanced Warfare was unbelievably unbalanced and alienating as hell to me. Because it, it did the pick 11 perk system, like, off the bat, and you're talking about a guy who went from Call of Duty 4 to a little bit of Black Ops, then to Advanced Warfare. So it's like, pick 11? What? Oh, wow, yeah. I, I don't know any of this. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was very weird, and it felt like you have to you have to either be a run and gun you know maniac on chucking three cans of Mountain Dew to be anywhere near as good, mm. or you're a target. Like th like there's a cloaking device in Advanced Warfare. It's terrible. You can't you know, sa sound suppressors doesn't do jack. There's a jamming device for a thing, but only if it works on a Tuesday. And with it, it was <laughs> it, it was there's too uh, many uh, rules for this. It, yeah, way too many rules. Way too many SMGs. Way too many you know. Things it, it felt like it, it felt like it was made for the hardcore fan base and nobody else, and it was very alienating very quickly. So when I got to World War II, I'm like, oh, this is actually reasonable now. It's just 
you know, you know, as you said, there's like a division. You have one to five divisions. You have infantry, you have armored, you have mountaineer. I'm like, okay, you know, this guy's for snipers. This one's for the shotgun maniacs. This guy's mm-hmm. for the jack of all trades. I'm like, that's fine. And then you get, and then you get your loadout, which is like simple pistol, rifle, and you get like a, and you get like a special like buff. Like you can, there's like a couple of buffs you can unlock. And I'm like, okay. And then you just go to it, and I'm okay. I'm fine with that. That's a much needed stripping down. I thought it worked. And then I got to the maps, and the maps are just kind of there. Like, like the, uh, there's not really a whole lot of maps that really I remember all that much. Like, they feel very uh, uninspired and very basic. And I gotta bring it up. I'm never, I'm never going to live it down. But I gotta bring it up. Mm. Loot boxes. Oh yeah, the loots. You can watch them open. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> the so the, uh, I, I actually started laughing when I when I was walking around headquarters, the social zone, because yeah. I started laughing because I'm like, this is trying to be Destiny. <laughs> it's 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 trying to be the tower from Destiny. It's a smart idea, but like, what the hell are you doing? Like, it's not a community game. You don't go out with your friends and fight yeah. each other. It's it doesn't fit right. It doesn't feel, fit right at all. Like, that's what bothered me. <laughs> like, Bungie, like, for all the faults I think Destiny and Destiny 2 have, Destiny does a good job of feeling like, like a community game. Like, you, like some people I know will just stick around the tower and just dance and fool around be- before they go out and do their patrols or whatever. You know, that feels like a community because of just how, you know, central the social element is. With World War II, it's, it's just, oh, hey, you know, we can challenge people to trench fights and do some little emotes it's like destiny right and most of the fan base isn't even in the social zone they're just they're just marathoning matches and getting and trying to get their first prestige they don't give a damn yeah because why would you the the fun of destiny dancing is like well look at my cool shaders and my weapon and my armor like you're just a soldier man just go fight soldier man (laughs) exactly exactly you don't need to be here and I actually did. It, I actually remember having a bit of a tangent in the review. Where I'm like, the loot boxes thing is, loot boxes for me. I, I, I know for a fact they've become very popular, and I'm still aggravated as all crap about them because they're clearly a form of RNG microtransactions in a, in essence, a level of gambling. But for me, they always seem to make them pretty much divorced from from, from the rest of the game. Like Overwatch makes it pretty much divorced. The battle packs and mm-hmm. uh, Battlefield are very much attached, and even the prior. Microsoft's actions in like Advanced Warfare, Infinite Warfare, whatever, are relatively detached. But now with the loot boxes now being a central thing in the social zone where you have to basically drop a flare and call down a loot box, for me it comes off as very tactlessly offensive to World to World War II. <laughs> for it's me, weird. <laughs> it, for me that for me that bumps it up into full on bad taste. Like like so, some of the loot boxes, yeah, you got some cool gear and everything. World War Two was a resource; it, it was a resource deprived conflict. It was after the Great Depression. People were scrambling <laughs> around in scrapyards or bits of metal to set so they, the scene. They, uh, People were struggling for food. They pulled their money and they got a drop. <laughs> it makes sense. It just feels weird. It, it feels. It feels bad just doing that. It's and it's no more offensive than how just kind of meh the whole story is. <laughs> that, that that's something else. Well, that's something that really did bother me. Just the the loot boxes and also I know a lot of people are gonna, are going to argue oh it's just cosmetic it's not full on pay to win and yet I bumped into a lot of people online who have effectively become these un- these unkillable crazy people using things that are clearly not in World War II <laughs> to just devastate people nonstop. That sucks. Yeah, and it just doesn't feel right uh, to me at all. Like you know, you know, for, for me that was the major tipping point for Call of Duty when it started doing these microtransactions, these loot boxes. Mm-hmm. And I know it's going to be another bit of contention with the uh, EA's Battle Star Wars Battlefront Two coming out soon, and it's just it's something I always point out with my reviews because I feel like a lot of major major uh, publications don't deal with it. It's just like oh, it's a 
thing. It's like it's there, but if it if you feel like it really can affect gameplay or affected your gameplay directly, then it has to be brought up. Like it has to be brought up, and, and it's it, it's 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 an issue where I know a lot of people just want to talk about the game itself, to divorce from the business. But when the business itself is contributing to a game's quality, I feel as if that's an issue. Mm-hmm. But one hundred percent. Yeah, exactly, and. Uh, it's strange like multiplayer for me was a much more welcoming experience but it also made me want to flip the bird <laughs> to, yeah. to, 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 to activision <laughs> not a sledgehammer or raven software i think they did a good job with what they have but it just felt weird but probably the weirdest third mode in the game has to be nazi zombies ah uh, yes the zo- see the zombie mode i did go into and i played for 14 minutes by myself mm-hmm. oh you did the intro mission yeah and I, I could see the appeal to zombies i get it Except that, well, it feels like they once again took elements from from prior um uh, from prior uh, games. Like they took a little bit of Modern Warfare Three zombies, took a bit of Advanced Warfare zombies, a little bit of, sorry, a bit of World of War, not Modern Warfare. So three, many zombies. Yeah, they took some different elements for it, and they kind of and I do like how they kind of made a sort of grindhouse, sort of pulpy war uh, action mo- mm-hmm. movie thing with it, which is completely totally at odds with the rest of the game. By the way, it's it's like you pick up World War Two. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's I'll on the ground. <laughs> No, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's strange. <laughs> like this, this is the disc. This is beginning of the disc. You have a campaign that's trying desperately to be saving Private Ryan and a band of brothers put together, and comes off as a comes off as a modest disappointment, but actually not half bad. Yeah. Then you have then you have the multiplayer, which is stripped down, but otherwise kind of by the numbers and full of loot boxes. And then you have, <laughs> and, and then and then you have nazi zombies and it's just it feels like quentin tarantino just pops up out of left field and like hey man we're gonna do zombies now and <laughs> what about zombies we, okay. we, we need zombies we gotta sell this to more people we need zombies and that's probably the first that's probably the first thing i know is like zombies is actually on the disc like they usually for the longest time zombies was locked behind the season pass so they had to be you know you know nazi the, the zombie mode would be really released as part of the map pack but now for World War II, it's packaged on disc now. And I'm like, okay, might as well, might as well cut out the middleman. And then I find out that the, 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 the campaign, for lack of a better term, for the zombie mode is basically a bunch of um, bunch, basically a bunch of agents from the Allied forces trying to stop this crazy outbreak of Nazi zombies in this last ditch effort by Hitler to win the World War. And I'm like, wait, what? It's- that is a little weird. It it is pretty goofy, like like kind of remind me a, a a bit of like I noticed they were trying to do the sort of like body horror thing with um with these d- devices on the people on the zombies, so they're kind of like it's kind of like a callback to what what Mengele was doing, you know, you know back World War Two, and like that's cute. And I had to say the, the the looks for the zombies look pretty neat. Then I remembered, oh yeah, Sledgehammer. These guys are made up of ex visceral people. The guys that worked on Dead Space. Oh, so yeah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. They know how to make a really grotesque looking monster, or humanoid. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. But once again, I felt like it was just another horde mode style, objective based, defend the point map mode. You know, you get a weapon, you get ammo, you shoot zombies in the head, you get points, rinse, repeat until you die. It just kind of it was just kind of there. Yeah. And despite, and I will say though, I do like how they actually got some pretty big actors. They got Ving Rhames, David Tennant in there, and they're clearly having a blast. They're clearly having fun, fun with this bit of nonsense. <laughs> but at the same time, it, it just feels just kind of by the numbers, which is weird because you can get a freaking Tesla cannon while fighting off super zombies. And I'm like, I'm just kind of mildly amused, but not exactly moved by all this. It is. <laughs> It's... It is a base. It is baseline, all right, but that was basically my my mood when it came to Call of Duty World War Two, and it just felt weird. Like I felt, I felt like I was Mugatu uh, in Zooland. <laughs> you know, so, does anybody know this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills because I'm seeing major other uh, other outlets, you know, you know, praising this as being a bold new direction, this big new thing. And it's supposed to be something worth praise. I'm just like they went back to their roots and just kind of tread water. Yeah, and it's that's... not like it was phoned in or anything, but it, it oh, kind no. of feels not uninspired, but just it doesn't reach beyond. It's just like, oh, we made World War II. Like, okay. All and right. and it's and it feels like every other World War II major World War II game greatest hits action game. 
Mm-hmm. I, which is which is weird because I do like the tech the tech they brought along. Like it visually still looks great, and I like the motion capture performances. Like and yeah, yeah, and the and the actors they actually did get for the campaign are good. Are really good. they're actually really good. I just wish they were more than just the usual stereotypes. Yeah, they tried to go a little further with that with some of these. You know, like the sergeant is against the whatever their rank was, and that's that's cool but it's it's just there it, the whole game is just there and i never and even some of these places you go to like i had a big problem with the game looking so it sounds weird because we're going back in time again brown and bland for a lot of it, <laughs> it it's so muddy and like icky i was actually okay, no i was actually okay with that i'm like okay no 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 this this is reasonable this is fine and it does good. It does a good job of contrast because you brought up because you brought up the uh, the German embassy mission. Where yeah, kinda... that's true. That's a standout because then it gets some blue in there. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, because visually it pops. Visually, it sticks in your head a bit more. But but at the same time, then we get weird se- sequences like like I said before, the train sequence. The train, yeah. yeah the train just felt like a parody for me. It fe- the felt train like felt like, hey, what if we made Uncharted but in first person? <laughs> I'm like all right, it, it, it does feel like that bit from Uncharted too, doesn't it? Because it yeah. flips and it rolls, and then that you're chasing it on a jeep, like... and yeah, it's and then it's oh my gosh, and then when you wake, and then somehow you wake up miraculously still alive, and oh no, it turns out some German soldiers also survive it. Let's shoot them as well. While we yeah, and that happens so you. much. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> every third time you fall down, that happens. It, it it feels just kind of weird. Like I said, it feels like it wants to be Saving Private Ryan, but then it goes, but but then it goes silly, and it's difficult to tell what kind of tone it wants to set for itself. And I feel like I feel like that also kind of contributed to my score as a whole. Like mm-hmm. Nazi zombies feels very out of place. The multiplayer feels okay, and then they put the loot boxes in, and it feels out of place. And then the campaign wants to be genuine, but then it does stuff like the train and stuff, and it feels out of place. It keeps bumping up against what could have been something amazing, but it keeps falling apart due to either adhering to the Call of Duty brand, the action set piece Hollywood brand, or the compliance by the publisher with with the loot boxes. Yeah, I feel like there's something, particularly with the campaign, they ran into something that changed their their vision or their course of action somewhere along the line where, because part you're like you're saying parts of it really go there like the sneaking in and you look at your papers it is like this is very different from what you'd expect from a call of duty and they actually do a pretty good job at it but the rest of it with the train and some of these sequences like here's the 15th sniper battle and, all right here's the tank sequence and like, okay guys and, and that's like i said before the here's the brand there's actually a such there's actually a, a moment where I actually managed to get through uh, the because the because the part of the train sequence starts the stealth section and I was trying to see if they actually programmed it to be different if you actually managed to sneak yourself all the way over and, you know, mm. stop it. But nope, it's a scripted sequence. When you get halfway through the reinforcements show up and blow your cover intentionally, then it turns into a gunfight again. And I noticed that happens almost continuously when it comes to World War II. Like, it wants, like every single time it does something interesting, it boils down to a gunfight. And... Once again, I know it's Call of Duty. You got, you got, you got to have some running guns, some shooty, shooty, shooty. But, but for some reason, it just feels obligatory. Like I remember, there's actually a sequence where you're like separated from your group, and there's like a prolonged sniper battle where you have a sniper tar- you know, targeting you, and you have to like hide in terms of like a prolonged stealth sequence. Oh yeah, that being pretty. Yeah, I remember that being pretty good. And then you know, soldiers come in, and then oh great, I'm gonna shoot more people. Yeah. And I almost just forgot about the sequence where you go back to get the girl in the uh, hotel no, or whatever. Th- th- nope. That was fantastic. It, that it was tries and it enjoyed. does achieve some things and it just kind of forgets about them and like, all right, I guess we moved on. It, it's, it's, it's always the problem with the Call of Duty campaign. Like it does a lot of fun stuff then it kind of forgets about it and just the shooting feels like padding. It, it it feels like potatoes, you know. You, you put it in, it's good. so you don't, so you feel full. It's good shooting, but yeah, it is lifeless, like the zombies. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. I think we've beaten this to death. Not dead enough to kill the zombies. Let's move on to uh, the, the other topic we got. Oh, 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 oh one more thing. Oh okay. yeah, just 
Oh, yeah, just last little comment. Like I said before, I'm not crapping all over this game. Like, no. you know, seven seven via the GameFanatics.com scoring means it's a good it's good. And if you and if you pick up Call of Duty every November and play to your heart's content, you're gonna have fun. You're gonna be fine. It's just I expected more. That's it. That's all. Yeah, I think that's fair. The twentieth Call of Duty, we can expect more. <laughs> but 